Hello, my friend. I hope you're happy and peaceful. Uh, Last week, we talked about the seven key attitudes for happiness. And this week, we're going to expand on one of them, non-striving. So how compatible is making lots of plans for the future with living a calm, happy life in the present? Welcome to Mindfulness for Beginners. As humans, we like to think about goals. You're expected to have aims and to achieve and to have a plan to get there. This is perfectly normal and there's nothing necessarily wrong with planning for the future. But problems arise when we get swept away by our plans and those plans result in us being stressed and unhappy in the present. And this can happen for three reasons. The first is needing to be the best that we can be. And I've talked about perfectionism in a previous episode a really long time ago, uh, but it bears mentioning again. Many people, including me, have perfectionist traits, making you feel as if you need to achieve or maximise your potential, needing to be the best at everything. Perfectionism and that attachment to never failing can be very harmful to your well-being and to your self-worth. If you train your awareness with regular practice, then you can notice that feeling arising. You can breathe, take a step back, look deeply into it, and tend to your perfectionism with compassion and understanding. The second reason why we get caught up in planning is that we attach our happiness to external factors like success, relationships, consumption. We make a decision that we'll be happy when we buy that house, when we get married, When we have kids, when we go on a holiday, when we get a new job, you can think of a hundred different things. But we can't live happily in the future. And human beings, being what we are, when we actually get there and achieve the thing that we've been thinking about for so long, the joy tends to be fleeting and can't live up to how we've built it up in our heads. Of course, we can enjoy these things in the present, but attaching our well-being to them in the future sets us up for suffering. And the final reason that we have our plan is that we're not noticing the joy and happiness in the world right in front of us. It's a bit like watching a movie, knowing that there will be a climax and a third act later on, and not paying attention to the scene in front of you. That would be silly, wouldn't it? But we do that frequently. We get caught up in the future and ignore what's happening right now. And gratitude is a key practice in mindfulness. Without training our awareness of the present moment, we can miss the joy from the people in our life, the roof over your head, your pet dog, your lunch, even the chair that you're sitting on. If you find that your plans for the future take you away from the present and you're always living in some other time and place, then consider letting go of the vision of the future that you've painted for yourself and think of it more as a direction that you're moving in rather than a destination. That direction should be helpful to your mental health. It should help you to build your peace and happiness rather than being built on consumption, achievement, or rushing around. And please don't take any of this as a judgment. Like you, I get caught up in plans for the future and rushing around, we all do. But mindfulness is the art of stopping. By stopping and taking a break from our planning and our striving, We can make aware, informed and choices about whether our planning really is good for us or whether we need to breathe, relax and allow things to unfold in their own time. So now is a really good opportunity to stop and spend some time in the present moment. So we're going to do your classic calm ease guided meditation and I'll start with three sounds of the bell and the usual settling in introduction. Taking a moment to focus 
on your posture. And I would invite you to imagine that you have a thread attached to the crown of your head. And it's gently pulling you upwards into an upright position. Your spine like a stack of coins. Your heart raised upwards and outwards. Your hands comfortably in your lap. Moving your awareness to your body. Noticing if you feel warm or cold. Noticing if you feel tense or relaxed. Becoming aware of the sensation of the clothes against your skin. And the points of contact between your body and the chair and the floor. Moving your awareness to your thoughts and feelings. And as we go through the guided meditation, noticing each thought as it arises, and that might be an anxious thought about tomorrow. It might be a happy thought about today. It might be a regretful thought about yesterday. Just sitting with each thought for a moment, allowing it to leave, and gently and without judgment, bringing your attention back to your breath. And finally, focusing your awareness on your breath, noticing that column of air between your nose and your diaphragm, noticing how the air feels cooler on the way in, warmer on the way out. Breathing in, I know I am breathing in, breathing out. I know I am breathing out, in, out. Breathing in, my breath grows deep. Breathing out, my breath goes slow. Deep, slow.
Breathing in, I calm my body and my mind. Breathing out, I ease everything. Calm, ease. Breathing in, I smile. Nothing is as important as my peace. Breathing out, I release all tensions and worries. Smiling, releasing.
breathing in, I establish myself in the present moment. Breathing out, I realize it is a wonderful moment. Present moment, wonderful moment. Opening your eyes, taking a moment to stretch your back or your legs if you need to. Noticing any changes in your mind or in your body. And if you feel a sense of calm or peace, I would invite you to carry that through the rest of your day. And if you're enjoying the podcast, then I would invite you to leave a review or share it on social media and pass it along to somebody else. May you be happy, may you be peaceful, and may you look at yourself through the eyes of understanding and compassion.